You and I probably agree that saving money can be pretty tough. The money we earn gets pulled in all directions. And I know that for a lot of people, savings ends up being kind of an afterthought. One of the ways you can motivate yourself to save more is by setting up a savings tracker in your journal to keep track of your progress. Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashi Curran, and today I'm going to be taking you through some ideas for styles of spending trackers you can use in your journal. I'll be showing you some of the saving trackers I've used previously, and then going through a general collection of ideas that you can use to set up your own tracker. As usual, the equipment I use in setting up the pages for today's ideas is linked in the description box below, so let's jump in. In my first bullet journal from the end of 2016, I didn't actually set myself up a savings tracker until I was preparing for 2017. So this tracker here is part of my start of year pages. For this tracker I chose these little L shapes because I wanted the tracker to have some visual interest. Each of these little shapes represents $100 and once I reached that amount I would colour the shape in. Each row here represents $1000 so once I'd finished colouring the row in I'd also write down the date that I achieved that amount. Although this was a perfectly fine tracker and I did enjoy using it, when I went into my next journal I wanted to change things up a bit. In my second journal I switched the L shapes out for a more regular square, and instead of doing my tracking across the page I decided instead to go up and down. Here each of the smaller squares represents $100, and then the larger square on the end of each column represents the 1000 marks. My intention here was to write down the date that I achieved these, but you can see I didn't get around to filling that in. When it came to my third bullet journal, instead of writing down the total amount I had in my savings, I instead decided to write down the amount that I had saved that year. As you can see, I again for each of the thousand marks left myself a bigger square with a space to write down the date that I achieved that amount. You can also see that my savings was happening a fair bit more slowly this year, because this journal was for the first half of last year, and as I've talked about previously, last year my partner and I bought our first home. For my most recent savings tracker, I don't have one in my current journal, I used that same snaking layout and the square boxes. Here I made all of the boxes the same size, and each of the smaller boxes is $50. You can see that as I mentioned in my last one, savings didn't really happen as well last year as it had previously. So you will have seen that for my savings trackers, I do typically stick to a certain type of layout, where I have a continuous snaking type of path that allows me to track my total savings. As I've already given those to you as an example, what I'm now going to do is show you a couple of different styles. Before we jump in though, a rundown on the equipment we have for today. For these pages I used my Pit Artist pens in the M and S sizes, Tombow Dual Brush Marker 569, an HB pencil, and my Uniball Signo white gel pen. The first style of tracker I have for you is one where you have a box or a doodle or some type of shape that you split into separate segments. Each segment represents a certain amount of money, and every time you save that much or up to that much, you colour the segment in. So for instance, in these first three here, these are just rectangular shapes that I've separated into 14 segments. So one row of boxes high for each of them. In each of these, however, one segment represents a different amount of money. So let's say that we're working in hundreds. For this one here, each of those segments is $100. In this one though, each segment is $200. And then on this last one, each segment is $50. This can actually be quite useful. For instance, let's say that on your savings tracker, you wanna set up a bunch of different bars for a couple of the different things that you're saving towards. So you draw out your rectangles that are all the same size. But the issue is, is that each of those things is gonna cost you a slightly different amount of money. By making each of your segments represent a different amount of money, it means you can have bars that are the same size, but still accurately reflect the amount of money you need to save towards each of those things. This fourth bar works on the same principle, so each of these boxes represents a certain amount of money. However, you can see that this one I've made three-dimensional by adding a line up the back that is one space up at the bottom and also goes further by one space at the top. You then just connect the top of this one 
to the top of that one using a straight line, and then the bottom of this one to the bottom of that one using a straight line. What I've also done on this one is use my HB pencil to go and add in the lines that are diagonal across here on each of the segments, and also these horizontal lines in the back on the side here, which makes each of these blocks look a little bit see-through. This one I haven't included a key on, but as was done with these ones, you can either write the number inside the box or beside it. If you're looking closely, you'll also have seen that on these ones where I've written the numbers on the side, I've written them next to the line that separates two segments. Whereas in this one, I've written the amount inside of the segment. This is also something you might want to consider if I was going to write them on the line for this one here, then when I got to the 14 mark, I would actually be writing the 14 over the top line, which would look a little bit strange. So going in with some color, let's just say that for each of these, I want to represent having saved $6,000. For this first one, I just color up to the 600 line. For this one, I also color up to the 600 line, which is distinctly lower because each segment here represents $200. For this one, each of the segments is $100, so I color in six of them. And then the same for this one as well. For this one, however, because I wanted my boxes to look see-through, I do also need to color the top face of the box. So like this is the top face here, we need to color the top face of the sixth box. You can either do this in the same color you're using, or you could use a lighter color to represent that kind of partial transparency of the other boxes. Or you could do it with a pattern to show that that's not actually you coloring in the 700 box, that's just representing the top of the 600 box. For these ones here, these work on the same principle of having a certain segment representing a certain amount of money. They're just done in a more pictorial form. So this one you may have seen before, it's a jar that a lot of people usually draw with water going into it, or sometimes they treat it like a mason jar that people use for drinking and they draw some kind of beverage inside of it. For our umbrella, each of the stripes on the umbrella represents a certain amount of money. For our rain cloud or rainy day fund, we have each of the raindrops representing a certain amount of money, a similar idea for the piggy bank and the coins going into it, and then for our flowers down here, each flower that isn't quite drawn in yet would represent a certain amount of money, so when you reach that amount of money you could draw the flower in. So for each of these ones I'm going to colour in up to the 3000 mark. You can see that these ones still give you that nice visual representation of how much money you've saved, but they're also a little bit more fun to draw out and colour in. Of course, here I'm just using the one colour, but you can use multiple colours on these as well. For pictures where it might be a little bit more difficult to actually see where the segments are, it is wise to also label them. So for the sunflower here, if you just looked at it at a first glance, you wouldn't necessarily know if you were supposed to be using the petals, or the leaves, or maybe the entire of the sunflower. So labelling can be quite useful and important. Of course I've only shown you guys a few ideas here, you can use any kind of picture or diagram or shape and do the same kind of thing. Turning over, we also have different styles of graphs you can use to track your money as well. So for the first one, we could of course use a line graph to show how much you've saved in each month. Along the vertical side here, you have the numbers that represent each amount of money, so 100 or 1000, 200 or 1000, etc. And then along the bottom I've got the initials for each month of the year. The way this one would work is that at the end of each month, you total up how much you'd saved for the month, and then put down a point to represent that amount. So let's just say that in January we saved $400, and then in February let's say we saved $600, so going along the February line up to the 600 line. 
and so on and so forth. As you put your points in for each month, you can also connect those with a line to actually form the line graph. Of course, for this one, I'm doing it freehand with made up values. So if you wanted to make this one look a little bit neater, it would be worthwhile using a ruler. Some other things you could add to this one to help it motivate you a bit more might be a certain amount that you want to save each month and you could draw that in with another pen or possibly a pencil. So let's just say that for each month my goal was $400, I could draw a line across this 400 mark so that I can very easily see the months where I did achieve my goal and the months that I didn't. Also, if you've done this for a while or if you had the data on hand, you could also put in a ghost line to show you the amount that you saved in each month for previous years. So for instance, let's say that this data was from this year, at the end of the year. I could also have the data from last year in there as well. So chucking that in as an example. This one can be kind of helpful in motivating you to do more saving, because it's kind of pitting you against yourself. So you're trying to compete with yourself from the year prior to see if you can save more in each month. As well as line graphs, we can also use bar graphs for this. It works along a similar idea, so at the end of each month, you total up how much you saved for that month, and then put in a bar to represent that amount. So if I use the same amounts as I used up here, I'm going to go fill that one in now. Again, as I mentioned before, a lot neater if you use a ruler. These two examples, however, work on the idea of showing you how much you save within each month, but not how much you've saved total. For this final example, I have a running list here where you can write down the date, amount that you saved, and the total you've saved overall. As well as that, on this side, there's also one of those color in the segment style sections that you can use to visually represent your progress. So for example, let's just say that on the 4th of January, I put $30 into my savings, then my total amount in the savings pot would be $30. Then let's say that on the 7th of January, I added another $40, which would bring my total up to 70, and so on and so forth. You could on this one, instead of colouring the bar in all the same colour, you could use alternating colours or a variety of colours to represent each month of the year. This would show you in which months you'd made the biggest contributions to your savings. And also the smallest. Having now made this video, I really feel like I need to put a savings tracker in my current journal. My question for you, what are your biggest struggles when it comes to saving? For me, it's that I really like to see progress quite quickly, so I'm always more inclined to put larger sums of money away all at once, rather than the smaller amounts added more often approach, which is usually more feasible. I'm going to be putting out more money related spread videos this month, so feel free to subscribe to make sure that you don't miss them. Thanks for watching, and if you liked today's video, feel free to go check out another one. Until next time, bye!